Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the March um, 17th. Yeah, it's March 17th. More importantly, maybe it's the Turnaround Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who abs, of course, I say Turnaround Tuesday. Maybe I shouldn't have said that because the markets are up out there. But you know what I meant out there. Look, I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. Uh, but in this case, you got to respond early. That's send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. And, of course, in our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. Right now, we've got all the indices in the green out here. The Dow's up 3%, 610 points. That used to mean something. Today's day and age, but not so much. The S&P's up 4%, 96 points. The NASDAQ, 100, 318 points. The Russell, 28. Some eyes are up nearly 6% or 77 points. They're making the biggest showing, followed by the transports out there. They're up 375 points. So we'll take a look at all those indices, take a look at where resistance is at, what they need to do to suggest to you a further rally or counter trend rally. Gold is up 43 bucks. Spot volatility is down 9%. Silver's off 27 pennies. Lights we crude off 53 cents. Natural gas down about 4 cents. And uh, T bonds, 30 year treasury off uh, more than 4 points right now. So let's begin by understanding where the brick wall of resistance is for the uh, day. We saw it uh, occur earlier. Uh, subscribers saw this because I was able to put this out in one of the updates so they knew what the next hurdle was. And if you were wondering why price stopped where it did, well, wonder no more. These are not lines that Stevie draws in on his chart. So that way, it's all automated. It's all part of the exact same set of tools that you and I look at each day during this hour out here. And they're great tools. I want you to learn them. I want to be able to pass them on to you. You can pass them on others. These have stead, these have stead or stood, depending on how you like to stead or stood, the test of time. And that's the cool thing. So what is it Stevie's talking about? Now, we're just looking at 30-minute time frame charts out here. And what I want you to really focus on or pay attention to are the two middle sections. So the top is the ES mini 30 minute time frame chart, then followed by the NASDAQ, then the Dow, then the Russell 2000. Now, the two center panels, panels out there, if you were going to, those of you who've been watching this show and are familiar with the TD9 resistance and breakout, breakdown, breakdown levels, if you were going to look at this chart and tell me where price is going to run into resistance, possibly turn around, we don't feel break resistance, but where is resistance, where would the sellers be inside the NQ? Because, see, we don't have that same set of lines. We don't have that same TD9 count uh, pattern out here for the ES and for the Russell 2000. They've got them, but their, their resistance levels are much higher. And the key level was 74.71. Now, granted, price pierced that area, but it's on a closing basis for a 30-minute time frame that we're looking at. Any close on a 30-minute bar had tested and rejected that 74.71 says what? says, for goodness sakes, price can actually go down and test the breakout support level. That's at 70.66. We're at 72.99 right now. I don't want to make that piece of the call. Instead, the piece of the call, we know that that's support. So that piece of it, uh, I'll give you as the call. But what we know is the key area of resistance, 74.71, and all of the indices did the same thing at the same time. In fact, the Dow really hit right, right at that level. 21.284 is the number. That's a green number if you take a look at lower right but in that uh, second panel from the bottom out here and uh, so there's resistance hey i believe we have call ahead seating we've got john and philly on the line john thanks for calling thanks for holding how are you call ahead seating i love it i love it too didn't realize that it was going to be a, a nationwide thing though you are a trendsetter yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the one trend that uh, none of us want to set. I guess uh, <laughs> I, I heard someone oh, say, I heard someone uh, Steve, say that they're... 
uh, thanks for taking the, the call. No, ahead, Very ahead, specific John. question, uh, and I jumped right in here as you're going through <clears throat> your overview, because I, uh, I know you'd have done parameters to answer this question, please. Now, uh, I'll leave my uh, questions specifically focused upon the uh, E-mini S&P, the June contract. So yes. we have lows today and I guess yesterday at 2350 thereabouts. The first question is, if that is broken, uh, do you have any targets, lower, lower targets, that you'd be looking to get achieved? And uh, the second question is, um, what do you think the odds are of that same contract get, getting some giddy-up to launch over and above that 2540, 2560 area? So those are the two questions. I appreciate it. sharing your thoughts on that. You bet, you bet. So um, I've got, um, I'm trying, because you're asking about the bigger picture out here, John, I've had to load the continuous contract on one of my other tools. So just load it up, and that's what we're going to take a look at so that I've got the larger data. So I want to answer the first, the second question first, which was if the uh, lows of yesterday fail inside the ES Mini, where's the next level of support? In order for me to find that out or to find out some breakout areas here, I've got to go to the larger picture here. And the larger picture I want to go to really is the monthly time frame chart. And I would say that if the lows of yesterday are pierced, and even if they're not, um, we're looking at a move to about the 2239 area. And 2239, John, is the uh, breakout level on the monthly time frame using the continuous contract um, at that stage. What I can share with you is because on the current contract, we'd go, the price may be a bit different. I would look at the January 2017 uh, low. January 2017 low, which is that's the 2239.50 area. That would become the next target. That's the uh, that's the breakout area out there. So that would be my answer for you on the ES Mini for the move to the for potential move to the downside. With regard to a move to the upside out here, and in essence, I'm going to pull first. I'm going to, well, no, actually, I think I can do it right here. Give me a second, because then I'll just stay with the ES Mini. And what I'm going to look at here, John, is a 30 minute time frame. And on this 30 minute time frame chart, I was really alluding to it earlier with regard to why did price stop where it did this morning. But that was all based upon what was going on inside the NQ and the uh, Dow equity futures contract, where price really hit resistance and stopped right there. The resistance level. For the ES Mini on a 30-minute time frame, I believe it is, I've got the continuous up, is 2572.50. If price can get above that, then there are two other levels out here to be looking at, 2615 and 2647. So the key area here, I believe, is going to be the 2572.50. But let me just do this here. I just want to make sure. And let me just put up the, uh, it'll take just a minute here to populate, but let me put up the June contract and see what number comes in. I know we're going to hard breakout here. It's 2560.75. I want to give you the right data out here. 2560.75. Hey, John, we're going to go to a break. I think you're still on the line. Hold oh, yeah. on. Okay, hold on. We'll come back to that and let's, let's pick this apart for everybody that's in our viewing audience. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, indices in the green out here. We're on the line with John in uh, Philly. So, John, one of the things that I wanted to do, I know you're asking specific questions about the, the S&P or the ES Mini specifically. And so I, I think I, I gave you the, the upside target that I need to see cleared. And also today was not the lower. Yesterday was not the low what the downside price target would be. The other thing that I'm watching that I think will assist us, you, I, and everybody else that's listening out here. Um, in, and I want to be able to shift over to this if, if we can, if that's okay. Is, uh, sure. Are the top nine holdings inside of the NDX 100? And the reason why I want to do that is because those nine holdings, as you know, represent 54% uh, of the actual indices. So the ability to just track nine of the top stocks that would carry the ball over the hurdle, so to speak, I think we can get a lot of information from there. And so, so here, when I take a look at uh, here, I've got and I've got the, we'll take a look at all nine of them. Uh, you've got Microsoft, Apple, and Amazon, 10.24%, 10.14, 9.9% as of yesterday's close. And what I have on this chart here, John, is I've got my oscillator and change line. Uh, that's the uh, green and red squiggly line. And then the horizontal lines are these TD9 count uh, breakout or breakdown levels. Right now we're looking at the, at support levels that are out here. But here is the key, and we can see that Amazon is an example. In today's price action, what price was able to do so far today was get up and test the oscillator and change line. Now that line here, and that's the bottom panel that we're looking at, when that line changes color, so in this case here it went from green to red, what that tells us is that tells us that we are going to see a catch-up over the coming sessions, we don't know how many, but over the coming sessions, where price and that line are going to catch up to each other. The bearish test is the one that's on right now, which is a test and rejection. Now, I don't know where the end of the day closes, but if Amazon can close above approximately 1834 and change out there, then price will have overtaken that. And that would tell you and I uh, more of a counter trend rally is about to unfold, at least in the case of Amazon. Apple is well away from that test. That test would be 269.90 out there. So it's well away from an area that it needs to clear for this to be anything other than a counter trend rally. I will classify Amazon right now, 120 in the afternoon, a counter trend rally flat out. Microsoft, the number one holding inside the NDX 100, 
would need to clear 153.96. Now, I'm not saying it needs to do it today, but here, Amazon is tested and rejected, so let's watch the end of day reading there. That's not a good scene with regard to um, the case being built right now that the uh, NQ is getting ready to break out. If we take a look at Google, which is really broken up between two um, uh, equities, uh, uh, the two symbols, it, the, rep, the both symbols represent 8.7%. It needs to get up to the 1210 area. It's made a lower low, traded a lower low today. So that's not helping in this group. Uh, Facebook has got to get up to 166.15 or more. Um, that's not it. Uh, Intel. So you saw the semiconductors. And Intel, I believe, is one of the top holdings, one of the top two or three, four holdings inside there. What it did today is tested and rejected that oscillator on change line of 51.66. So as of 121 in the afternoon, and we know that the markets are well off their highs here, but what we can see is how these individual stocks, how they got up to uh, certain key levels, that would indicate just really a simple counter trend rally that has failed inside of Intel and inside of Amazon because both of those have tested and rejected those areas. The last three that would make up the 54% would then come to Cisco, Comcast, and uh, PepsiCo. And here, none of them have really tested. The closest one was, has been would be Cisco, and that number that has got a close above would be 36.48. So when I, I, I go from there, so, so here, the top 10 holdings, not top nine holdings, my, well, really top 10 because of Google would make up two symbols. Um, that make up 54% of the indice. Nothing here is broken out just yet. So there's no reason uh, to, to think that this rally is going to get any legs. Now, at the end of the day, if price closes above those things, I would absolutely have a different uh, thought process. The other issue that's going on inside the market right now is the market breadth is poor. On a 60-minute time frame, even with the bounce that we had on a 60-minute time frame, and you're looking in the upper right-hand corner at the speed dials here, it's still market breath bearish, whether it's daily, weekly, 240, or the 60-minute time frame. And when I come take a look at the NDX 100, all of those time frames are also bearish out there. So that's kind of, did, did that help to answer your question or at least my thinking or what needs to be done to suggest that maybe there would be... Um, uh, more of a rally or that yesterday was a bottom. I'm just not getting the bottom confirmation yet that I'm looking for. Yeah, I, I appreciate you sharing, Steve. The, the answer to your question is yes, you did. And uh, one thing I take away that I hadn't thought about was the uh, the 2017 low, which was January 2017, as a relevant price to be watching if we do break lower. And uh, I will sign off, say thank you very much, and just um, and just share this, uh, Steve. I've always I've always observed, uh, knowing your mugshot from uh, uh, from starring on TFNN, that I can't help but think you uh, you had mentioned advancing the ball forward, um, perhaps. Perhaps your uncle on your mother's side was the Notre Dame graduate, the first Super Bowl running back winner, Paul Horning, who you look <laughs> very it. much like. So, uh, so go it. to it, man. Advance that it. ball. I love it. All right, John. Hey, good to talk to you. Thanks so much for calling. Let's go to our next caller, and that's Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding for so long. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. I hope everything's well with you. It is. Thanks so much for asking. And I know that it is the is it the Dow Equity Futures contract that you wanted to look at? It was. Yeah, that's the one we can focus on. It was really just all the uh, equity futures contracts. Uh, OK, they're trading overnight. And my uh, specific question was, I don't understand it. I'm not sure you're going to be able to answer it, but I'd just like to get your thoughts on it. Sure. I was following with it, you know, which I often do last night and. After they first opened at three o'clock, you know, my time here. Yes. And just noticing that it seemed like every time we would get up to a level of around eight hundred on the on the YM, they would halt it. They would stop trading. I didn't get why why it would they be doing that. It seems like it was throwing a wet blanket on any kind of momentum that this that was trying to generate. And so then when it reopened, they kind of pounce on it again. It would grind its way up there to 800, they'd stop it again, wet blanket on it again. I just want to get your thoughts on it. 
Yeah, the reason is just because we've got limit up and limit down. And so what the futures contracts did last night at various times were they each hit that limit up. And then you've got the uh, pause. So, uh, yeah, as Duffy writes in the den, it's just the exchange rule. So, you know, as much as after a 3,000 uh, point a day to the downside, you'd love to not inhibit the move to the upside. They've got the rules on the ceilings to the upside and to the downside. So inside the newsletter, as an example, um, and it's this chart here that I'm showing, and you'll, 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 you'll see it at the end of day reports out here. Um, in the upper left-hand corner, I show the limit down numbers and the limit up. The limit ups will be recalculated tonight. And that way you'll know, um, you know where things can poop, up to either, poop out to either side. Hey, Brett, we're going to a break. Would you be kind enough to hold through that? I sure will, Steve. You bet. We'll be back with Brent in Martinez, California in just a few minutes. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're on the line with uh, Brent in Martinez, California. We're talking about how last night the uh, Dow, uh, really all the equity futures contracts, had some nice momentum, but uh, they just simply stopped trading once they hit the limit up. So again, Brent, in the uh, newsletter, um, I have both the limit up and the uh, limit down levels. Uh, and that way it will help you uh, to decide if you're, if you're trading intraday or trading the futures contracts, maybe what action to take as, uh, as that area gets uh, approached. The, the other thing that I would throw out there is um, 
uh, is to really use that opening range. Now, this is the Dow Equity Futures contract here. And folks, for those of you watching us on Tiger TV, what you can see are some, uh, some black horizontal lines. Those black horizontal lines represent the first 30 minutes of trading um, of the equity futures contract. So in Brent's case, it's from 3 to 3.30 in the afternoon. That's the beauty of three hours behind. Of course, the bummer of three hours behind is, you know, when I'm up at uh, 7, Brent has to get up at 4. So he probably never sleeps up there. But it's, I, think this will, I think this is really helpful um, to understand that opening range because, you know, when price starts trading above that area, then you just have to start looking for uh, some price targets. And that's where having the limit up would be would have been helpful uh, for you. Um, and if price starts trading below the opening range, you know, to start looking for some downside targets out there. Um, and so just a, just a tool to add to your arsenal out there. Uh, here, if we take a look at the, uh, well, if I look at the ES Mini, you'll see how it was able to get to, well, let me get the right contract out here, to get to uh, limit, gosh, darn it, I didn't put in the right thing. Uh, yes. Um, as soon as it, I guess it did populate here. Uh, really, a similar a similar look to the uh, to the NQ with regard to when it got to limit up. So, does does that help at all? Yeah, I guess my <clears throat> excuse me, my other question would be, why would they have um, a threshold greater to the downside, um, as far as allowing it to go down ten percent, say? As opposed to on the upside, you're only going to let it go four percent. You're going to you're going to halt it. That to me, it should be inverted the other way. I mean, there should be more protection to the downside than you know letting it go the other way uh, in a positive way. Why would you want to stifle that? That's what I don't get. So I believe in overnight trading, the uh, both the upside and the downside target are five percent. You know, we're typically not used to this kind of volatility out here. And so the 5% moves are fairly easy to, to do, uh, as we've seen. Uh, because, and again, uh, you know, but, but then last night it didn't even do that. When it was up at 800, that was maybe a 4% move. It hadn't even hit the threshold yet. So why are they, why are they stopping trading? That, that was my question. Yeah, so the... Uh, <sighs> I'd have to really go look at the math calculations. Uh, you know, the CME also produces on one of their pages the limit up, limit down um, targets each day. Um, you know, I've, I've just gotten lazy because eSignal does that for me. So I just simply respect and, and I know that. Um, I, so I don't, I, don't know, I, I don't know what else I can provide to you there. I wish I had I wish I could provide more, but that's. There's, I was know, wondering that. That was my understanding. It was five percent, but it didn't ever reach that point. It okay. was, you know, there. It already halted before it even got to five percent. It was maybe at the most. It was four, and it was probably less than that. It was probably three point eight or nine or something like that when they when it was halted, and then yeah. it, you know, then it went down the other way. Well, they didn't halt it when it went. It gave all that back, you know, at, at some point during the, you know, the trading. Uh, but, but again, sure. I'm not putting pressure on you to for all the answers. No, 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 trying, no, no. Trying, hey, to, hey. trying to figure out what what was why they were doing it, and it didn't make sense to me. I get it if it had hit five percent, you know, then I kind of you know I understood that part of it, but it didn't even do that last night that I saw, and maybe yeah. I missed something. But when I looked at it, the percentage had not reached that threshold yet. Well, look, I, I uh, look, I had the same problem. I, I, I had the same thought as you when I did get up this morning and I looked to see what was going on. I was like, oh, gosh, darn it. <laughs> you know, let it run. Oh, yeah, right? It just starts getting momentum. It's like, OK, let's just throw the big old wet blanket on it. You know, and it gives them a chance to, you know, get know. all geared up again to pounce on it. It just didn't make sense to me. It's, and again, if anything, give the thing more room to go to the upside, especially after what's happened. I and mean, come on, let, let the thing at least it's got a little momentum. Let it try to, you know, garner some some kind of a move. And every time it would get any kind of, you know, that going, they just they'd stifle that. And that doesn't seem right to me. But whatever. Yeah. So I think rules. the most important thing, That's though, fine. I think the most important thing for us is because we we are in such a volatile marketplace to both sides out there that this is kind of the the new normal for a period of time. 
uh, where we're going to have to just simply uh, get used to it. And so, and, and really, and the reason why you and I were spending so much time out here is because I think that's really important for all the other folks and all the traders that are out there. Um, you know, because now you can see what happened, how last night reacted, and you may want to, you know, take your take your profits at that stage if it trades to to that area. You know, the one thing that we've experienced here on the limit down test the last um, three, I believe, three sessions uh, over the course of the last uh, uh, ten days out here, or less than ten days really, is that the second limit downs uh, when the cash market has opened, those have all been bottoms out there. So I don't want to see that again. You know, it, it hurts too many people out there. But if we do, it's just a uh, food for thought out there with regard to a potential trade with a with a nice uh, tight stop out there. So, is there is there anything else that I can look at for you? Anything else that I can help you with? Oh, as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to kind of go over that and and uh, you know give your thoughts about it. And that's what I was hoping for. And you definitely came through with that. So, just yeah. have a wonderful day and. I'm sure we'll, we'll talk soon, and we'll, we'll do. Yeah, and and tonight, uh, you watch that watch that opening range, that first 30 minute bar, and uh, the trading with inside the range, you don't know which way it's going to go. But breaking one of those in a close above or a close below is really providing you with a good signal information out there. At, at least it has been in the past. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't provide you with some nice information tonight. And Brent, always good to hear from you. Thanks for calling. If you've got a question, you know, so does somebody else. So uh, thanks for thanks for uh, thanks for that. Yeah, just appreciate all you put in your newsletter and, of course, what you do every day. Just, again, you take care, Steve. You bet. You bet. That was Brent in Martinez, California. So um, let's see. Let me just check here, folks. I just want to see if I do have any uh, emails out here. And um, I don't see anything. I mean, I've, I've got an email from someone, but it doesn't look like this is from the show. I get so many emails out here. Uh, that's why I ask you to put a radio show question in there because I just skip past everything else. So I don't see I don't see I don't see anything um, specific out here. So let's do this. Let's uh, this happens to be the so th this is the area here that John was talking about. Now this is for the Dow Diamonds. Um, and that uh, 2017 low in the Dow Diamonds would be the 196.69 area. And again, we talked about this last year, folks. This is a monthly chart that we're looking at. That these can really act as floors. And so, if 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 the on a monthly basis the diamonds were to close below 196.69, 154, the low from 2016 would become the target. Just a simple, easy peasy thing to do. Now, back to the uh, daily equity futures contracts. Yesterday, we saw some new market profiles that were attempting to form. Uh, when the futures market opened up uh, last night at 6 o'clock, again, those profiles had vanished. So we don't have any daily support areas. We don't have any weekly support areas for the equity futures contracts as we speak right now. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
from all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so let's um, we're going to go into some short term uh, time frame uh, trading out here just because we're trying to understand what the market is doing and doing it, you know, right right now as an example. And uh, so here we're looking at the 30 minute set of uh, profiles. Well, we're looking at the 30 minute market breadth. We're not looking at the profiles out here. And that's the red line and the green line. The red line represents a number of uh, stocks with inside. The, we're looking at the S&P 500. Uh, the number of stocks trading below the bottom of their 30-minute profile, it's 141, versus 196 are now trading above the top of their profile. So this is market positive. This is market bullish. So now we're going to come over and take a look at the ES Mini, the 30-minute time frame chart, and see what it's doing. It's going to help us to understand what the market is communicating to you and I on a very short-term basis, but right now. So here's what we can see. We can see that the ES Mini had pulled back to test Stevie's red line. We were taking a look at Stevie's red green line for the uh, top 10 holdings inside the NDX 100 to get a feel what they're doing on a daily basis. Well, all we've done is shift to a 30-minute time frame. So price pull Pulled back and tested support. So, John, I know that you had taken a trade. I believe you took a long trade here in the ES Mini. Um, and so now you've got two good factors, three good factors really on your side. The pullback was a test and rejection of Stevie's red line, the oscillator and change line. You now have a market breadth uh, bullish um, move out here, crossover, and prices trade above the top of that profile. That's resistance, 24.59. So this here would set up a move to the highs of today, uh, or that we saw about a couple hours ago, the shooting star out there, or basically that 25, 60, 70, uh, five area. So that's what it looks like right now at 144. That's using some short term time frames and just simply the tools at our arsenal to communicate to you, or really it's the tools that are communicating to us what the market's intentions are. So let's go to a, a caller that we've got in uh, Tampa, Florida. Um, and I apologize, I don't know who's calling, but uh, please, uh, who am I speaking to? Tom from Tampa. How you doing, Steve? Great. Great, Tom. I'm sorry. Oh, I see. I see the name. I just I'm having trouble reading these days, apparently. But uh, how are you today? That's Tom? OK. I'm good. How about you? Very good. Thanks so much. And, and uh, Disney, where they've closed down the uh, theme parks out here. Uh, that's a crazy situation. Um, so tell me what you're doing with Disney and how I can help you. Uh, I was thinking about picking it up here. I mean, those guys are loaded with cash. They got a boatload of cash. If I'm looking at their. Um uh, their their books right. Um, I mean, I can't see Disney. I mean, you know, are we going to get much lower? You think here than what we're at? Looks like a pretty good buying opportunity here. Oh, you're asking the million dollar question, aren't you? So you got uh, Disney yeah, trading. Sure. 
Yeah, which is great. I mean, that's the question to ask. And, and what, what you and I are going to do is we're going to go look at the charts and try to figure out what it's communicating to us. Now, I, I can share with you that what Disney did from a technical perspective on uh, March 13th was it created a hammer candle. And so that low, which is 92.25, is a really important low. Granted, yesterday pierced it and tested it, but it still closed above the low of that hammer candle. So, again, that number is 92.25. Uh, uh, the test yesterday was on slightly lighter volume out there, so that was a positive. So, yes, indeed, it's signaling to you that it's trying to form a uh, bottom, but has it formed a bottom? And is this, Tom, uh, uh, a trade, or is this a longer-term portfolio-type hold that you're looking at? Yeah, I'd say longer-term. I like to keep some of these bigger companies in there. Okay. So... From a longer-term standpoint, I would prefer that you see Disney, at least on a daily basis, prove itself to you that it's really bottomed. And what I mean by that is okay. when we take a look yeah. at this chart here, a counter-trend rally would take us up into the 102-ish range out there. That's this little red line. It's the oscillator and change line. It's going to change as price moves up and down. So I'm giving you the general area. But if Disney can close above that level, then that would be signaling to you and I that maybe this is more than a counter trend rally. Um, and that's why from a trade, yeah, I can see where you could take the trade, but your exit right now would be right. in that 102-ish area. That's what the daily time frame chart is communicating to you and I. If we're to try to find some type of bottom on the uh, weekly time frame chart, uh, 9211 was an important area for it to hold, and it's tested that. Do I have a pattern down here on a weekly time frame chart that that's it? I don't. And and uh, right. so and on a monthly time frame, let me just see what, what populates out here. The monthly is suggesting to you and I that we could see a print of 7854. So my overview on Disney right now is, yeah, it's trying to find a bottom. It's given us those signals. And it's going to form a TD nine count pattern, which is a very valid bottoming pattern out here. And that's because, and it looks like yesterday would be the low. Of course, I don't know what's going to happen the next couple hours out here. Uh, we've seen some crazy things, right. haven't we? Uh, so yeah. it's, give, it's giving you the bottom signals, but it could just be a counter trend rally up into that 102 area. But I'm giving you the parameters and you make the decision as to what to do out there. Right. Yeah. And you know, some of these oil stocks to me look pretty good right here too, man. You know, I don't see us getting a whole lot lower. I mean, what, we had 30, 29 bucks a barrel. I mean, some of those big oil companies might good, be good here too. So I, I hear what you're saying, um, but I, I just want to give you a food for thought. And I think that it's good food and it's good thought. And it is the following. I'm just trying to get it up here on my screen. And... And that is, and I referred to it uh, in a, a segment I did with Tom yesterday, and so I'm going to refer to it right now. I'm just changing the uh, parameters of my scale for the Dow. And uh, I can envision that what's going, what we might see going on over the course of the next several days is some type of counter trend rally and then another move lower out there. And the area that I'm targeting on the Dow specifically is about the 19,210 area. And the 19,210 area, the only way you get there is you have to set your chart to a logarithmic scale. And then you have to connect the dots. And the dots that I'm connecting out here, Tom, are the highs from 2000 and then the highs from 2007. And that line is going to be a real clear area of uh, potential support, potential support. If we see it close below that, man, that really opens up. That really creates some major problems out there. When I say major, we're 15,000 type of uh, problems out here. That, wow. that line that we yeah. just looked at, uh, Tom, I don't have it handy right now. But this is the same line uh, that was used to uh, identify the bottom of the 1987 crash. However, its connective points were the 1929 high. The only way to have seen this was to be able to have access to all the historical data that I purchased out there. And when we connect the high of 1929 uh, to the high of 1966, a 1987 crash pulled right down there. And we're in a war. This is absolutely a war against this invisible force out here. And during wartime, I don't care what war, Korean War, uh, the, uh, the uh, 
Gulf War, the World War II, World War One. You, you just go through, you know, the different wars out there. Uh, the bottom will form first, and then it fall, and then maybe within about a one week to two week period, we'll have turned the corner from a news standpoint out here. Um, so I, I'm not comfortable yet. I haven't seen the two bo true bottoming signals. I'm open for them. I haven't seen them just yet. I see the oversold signals. I get that and the counter trend rally, but it's not unthinkable. You were thinking Disney can't go lower and some of these other great companies can't go lower. Not so fast. That's still in play. Right, right. The invisible war. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. So so be okay. careful. Hey, Steve, appreciate all the help. You bet. Thanks so much for calling. That was Tom in Tampa. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nigar hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated Concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up uh, 652 S&P, up 100 points out here. Let's take a look at the uh, Treasury bonds. We've got a five-point move today to the downside in the 30-year. Uh, They're trading at 175 and 23, 30 seconds. Now, as we take a look at what that is uh, showing us here on the uh, chart, this is the uh, June contract that we're looking at. You can see that price is trading right now back below the top of its profile. And that's at 177.05. So watch the 177.05 today. If price closes below that, then the signal here would be that we should see a, a pullback to either the center of its profile, 172 and 
10, 30 seconds or 169, 29 out there. Uh, maybe that's going to influence, maybe it's going to influence uh, price uh, 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 money going into the equity markets out there. But I would just kind of take one thing at a time out here and not so much um, be decisive about uh, any correlation along those lines out here. Um, so that's what I see going on inside the uh, 30 year Treasury. Again, I think perhaps the most important thing, if the markets are going to move to the upside, it's my belief that, we're, that the resistance levels that we will see fall are going to come from the weighted stocks inside of the NASDAQ 100. Those top three being Microsoft, Apple, and Amazon. Watch Amazon specifically. That number is somewhere right around 1837.74. I'll give you the figure of 1850.61. If you can see a close above that, that's going to be a signal that Amazon has cleared a key level of resistance and should continue to move higher. Microsoft's got to get up to 154.43. That's its counter trend rally area. And uh, inside of Apple, it's 270 and change out here. Those numbers are really important. I put those on your pad of paper out there, if to the extent you, that anybody has a pad of paper anymore. Inside of uh, Google, you're looking at 1213. Facebook, 166.46. Intel, that's a real important one, 51.75 or thereabout. We take a look at the last three before we go off the air. Cisco, Cisco, watch for the level of um, 36.59. Uh, Comcast, it's really, we're, we're really close to it right now. It's around the 30, I don't know, use 38.60 or so, and 127.95 on ticker symbol PEP. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Have a, a terrific day, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been